Welcome to the AgriPod, brought to you by Herdwatch, the number one farm management app used on over 21,000 farms. Join me, Katie Shanahan, as we bring together top experts in agriculture, influencers, and more each month. Uncover invaluable tips and tricks to navigate the agricultural calendar successfully. Engage in insightful discussions and current agricultural issues, all whilst having some fun along the way. Transform your farming journey by downloading the Herdwatch app today and say goodbye to farm paperwork. Nervous, come on, let's go. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to episode two of the AgriPod by Herdwatch. I'm your host, Katie Shanahan, and today I'm joined by a very well-known sheep farmer and shearer and YouTuber, Cami Wilson. So Cami, also known as The Sheep Game, is a well-known face in the world of YouTube, social media, and more. He has amassed over 368,000 subscribers on YouTube, 143,000 followers on Facebook, and over 52,000 on Instagram. So Cami, those are very, very big numbers, and thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks very much, Kate. It's exciting to be here. Always a big fan of your work. Hopefully you've got some tough questions for me. I'm ready for them. I uh, know we'll we'll keep it very, very light now tonight. We won't test you too hard. I know you've been extremely busy over the last few days. It's probably a busy time for you at the moment, is it? Yeah, it's just uh, sheep scanning time. Eh? So I'm a, I'm a, uh, for everything else we do, we do a lot of uh, contract sheep pregnancy scanning here around the sort of west coast of Scotland. And we, we go further afield as well. The great thing with scanning is you, you can justify a bit of a journey because if there's enough sheep, it's a very worthwhile thing to do. But yeah, it's been pretty full on this year. It's our, our biggest year by a good way, and it's been it's been tough fitting everything else in. You know, uh, I have a family as well that wants to see me a bit more, and I, you know, and a lot of sheep that need some attention too. Yeah, I can imagine. So I know you're extremely busy. So thanks again for giving us this little bit of time here at Herdwatch. Just to bring it back a little bit um, for people now, you probably have to be under a rock not to know who the sheep game is. But for those who might be listening that might know who you are, Cammy, just give everyone a little background on yourself, where you're from and what you get up to. Yeah, so my story, very simply, I was a shepherd's son who had no sort of direct route into farming and was always sort of pushed the way of, you know, either go and get a degree or, or find something away from farming. And I ended up being a police officer. So uh, I was a police officer for 12 years. But during that time, I started contract sheep shearing. I then started, uh, uh, I then got some of my own sheep. I then started sheep scanning to the point where everything built up. I started the Sheep Game YouTube channel uh, in the middle of there as well, and it got to the point where there was enough income from those other jobs that I could leave the police and just focus full-time on farming and YouTube and all those other uh, hustles that we have. And it, it's just became this... It's, it's been quite quite a journey. Like, it, it's... Uh, there's not much... I wouldn't say there's much, there's a lot of effort in editing videos. That's It's really, really difficult and time consuming and mentally draining because I don't like sitting at a computer. Like that is the hardest part of it all. But it's not that tough because I'm just filming the stuff I'm doing anyway. So it's like, it's just me really doing stuff. Yeah, it's I, not, it's yeah. not that, it's, I don't have to You're set it. <laughs> yeah, I don't set anything up or, or really need to try that hard. It's, if it wasn't for the editing part, it would be an absolute doddle. Yeah, maybe you could hire someone for that side of things. So <laughs> that's the future, absolutely. That's the future. I I never knew actually you were a police officer. So like, what what made you want to get into a job like that? There we go. I've been keeping it well secret. Um, yeah. So I, it literally was just the the wrong place at the wrong time. I think it, there was a big <laughs> push in Scotland. I know there was a big push in Scotland back in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, when the SNP had first sort of come into power they was they said they'd put a thousand more police officers in the street and they were literally just letting anyone in so i wrote an application <laughs> form not never <laughs> in my life uh, thinking i want to be a police officer and uh, i wrote an application form and like two and a half three months later that was that was a police officer crazy <laughs> pretty desperate to leave in a, a sheep farmer from scotland <laughs> I, I, exactly you know I, I went to the first interview i didn't even know who the chief constable was uh, or, or, or any of the things like I'd never done an interview 
you know, I was just yeah. a, boy, a boy for the farm. I, I didn't realise you're supposed to learn about the business before you go for an interview. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just thought they were wanting the crack. You know, I just thought they, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, if you're a decent guy, how you're long you doing? How long were you doing that for then? It, Twelve years. Uh, I was, oh my yeah, I was in the police for 12 years, so from 18 to 30. So I only stopped three years ago. Um, yeah. so, which it's is... mental. Like, you know, you think, you know how you're so big, uh, you have such a big presence on social media. Like, people tend to think that they, they know so much about you, and I'm just shocked to know I, I never knew that. <laughs> yeah, it, there are still a lot of people that don't know that. I, I, I did reveal it at one point early doors, and it, I used to say that I had a job in the city. Because it was kind of a conflict to say you were a police officer and be on so much social media. So I used to just say yes. I had a job in the city. And then when I knew in my head that I was, a, I was going to leave the police, I started talking about the fact I was in the police. Okay. But it, it's, um, yeah, it was a big part of my life. It's set me up really well in a lot of ways in terms of dealing with people of yes. um, just, I suppose, knowing what the other side of life is like. You know, like, I think sometimes you have the idea in farming, you know, like you, you know the expression like poor farmers type thing. Uh -huh. Um but like there there are no poor people compared to the poor people like in Glasgow City, you know, that are in yeah. high, high yeah. rise flats with no carpets and, you know, real poverty. Um it really opened my eyes to all that. How lucky yeah, we are. I, I yeah, I know. And I think even no matter how bad or well off you are in farming, I think just the lifestyle itself is a massive uh, pull for a lot of people. And we'll never starve. Like that, that's exactly. the big thing. You know, that, it's crazy now we live in a world where we're going backwards almost, where, you know, feeding people, feeding themselves is actually becoming their main priority, like a real struggle mm -hmm. for them. Whereas like a farmer, a farmer will never starve. You know, we have that luxury mm -hmm. at least. <laughs> if all else least. fails, if it all, you know, when the apocalypse hits, at least <laughs> we can still feed ourselves, which is a big thing, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to know. So, like, you're extremely busy, I know, at the moment. Like, tell me now, say, tomorrow, what have you planned or what's a typical day for you today? So, well, today I was scanning sheep down in a place, just St. John's Town of Rye, which is down sort of New Galloway. I, I was actually like, in a funny day today because it wasn't a big job, but it was filming for folk that are on This Farm in Life. I don't know if you get okay. do you watch, do you watch yeah. that over with you guys? Uh, we don't have it, no, but uh, I it's, know what it, you're on about. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's huge here in Scotland and in yeah. England. It's really, really popular. Probably, well, it's the number one farming show here. And yeah, so, so I set aside the whole morning for that. And then when I got back up the road, I was shearing Valley Blacknose sheep all afternoon. Oh wow! So that's yeah, that's that that will break that will a lot break, of wool there. That will break your spirit pretty quick. I can tell you. Um, it was funny actually because I'd, I've done it in two stints, and the last day I was in, the farmer asked me today, you know, look, was everything okay last year? And you're you were rougher quiet. You weren't yourself. I, I, his name's Thomas. Is Tom? If you had seven k of these things in front of you to shear, you'd be pretty quiet too. <laughs> so I was, like, I was probably just so depressed thinking about how many of these I had to shear. Um, so yeah, that 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 was my day today, uh, and then the next the next two days are scanning, and then I have two days of, I've basically just two days after that the following week. So that's me getting over it, and I'm buzzing to be finished yeah so like for any listeners now you know i know there will be a lot of young people now probably tuning into this podcast getting into something extra like the shearing or the scanning did that take much um in terms of learning or was it some things you just picked up along the way or how did you actually get into it properly yeah so shearing is definitely much easier to get into uh, it's uh, there's, there's, I, I always say the shearing is the hardest thing physically i've ever had to do and scanning is the hardest thing mentally yeah. I've ever had to do. Um, so shearing, everybody knows, is absolutely brutal. You know, physically, it's horrific. But there's more opportunities because, let's say, for example, one shearer can only shear 300 sheep in a day or 400 sheep, you know, if you're Ivan Scott or some of the you know, top guys. <laughs> but there's a limit, you know, at the top end, you're shearing 400 sheep a day, whereas a, okay. scanner, a scanner could easily do 2,000 sheep a day. Well, yeah, straight away yeah. you need a lot less scanners than you do shearers the other thing mm -hmm. is that a sheep scanner can go till they're 70 because it's not very physical you're just you know arm on the belly it's it's not that hard whereas shearers are generally packing it in when they're 35 to 40 okay so there's so much more opportunity so shearing 
get you know for us we got on a wheelboard course with you guys i don't know you have ivan scott doing courses and things like that that, that there is courses available great thing to get into travel the world make a lot of money scanning mm-hmm. scanning is just such you need so much luck it's it's so difficult i was very fortunate that i sort of had a mentor that got got me into it and then fed work my way okay um i i, I so that worked out well for me. I also had the benefit of being a police officer, so I didn't have to make money from the scanning. So okay. I could I could kind of do it and do the bigger jobs for free until I learned because you're going to make so many mistakes at the start. Yeah. I mean, I still make mistakes, but every scanner makes mistakes. But it, it, as you go from, I went from being Cammy Wilson, the good sheep shearer, to Cammy Wilson, the, am I allowed to swear on here? Ca- Cam, I'm, going to, I'm going to say it anyway, Cammy Wilson, the shite sheep scanner. So it, you know it flipped. So like, and bad news travels faster than good news. Um, and that was really, yeah, that was always that yeah. exactly. I was sore in the pride, like so. That was the hardest thing about it. But yeah, I don't know how yeah. people, people get into scanning these days without a mentor because you're. I think you're about eighteen thousand pounds for the for the equipment. Um, wow. Yeah. Plus a, plus yeah. a crate, you're over twenty thousand pounds. You need to lay out, and then you need to try and find the work. It's, yeah it's even difficult. like going back to their going back to say the shearing now first you know like some days there i'd be you'd be handling sheep and you know you're constantly stooping over and trying to turn them on their backs like even my back would be broke like what do you do to ensure that that's not happening to you because obviously you're handling a lot of sheep like you said a couple of hundred a day you know how is there is there certain you know shoes you wear or certain techniques in handling them to make sure that you're not damaging your back because you know as, as for farming farmers in general it's hard to not hurt your back you know on a daily basis but shearing on top of it must be tough enough yeah so the best tip i give any aspiring shearer or anyone uh, you know coming into the industry is you need to do a training i i do a tra- at least i mean i've been shearing now for 10 years and i will have done at least one training course every year okay um, wow. at, at least one even last year i had tom wilson sometimes it's not a case of going to the course sometimes i pay for someone to come uh, to the to the trailer with me so you know the year before last it was robbie hislop at shearing school uh, this year it was tom wilson who's a uh, a former world champion uh, who has um, uh, elite elite will hand uh, elite something is his training thing shocking I forgot that yeah. actually, in fact hang on I'm actually wearing his singlet there it's there <laughs> elite elite will industry training there we go <laughs> uh, it just dawned on me so elite will industry training is, is his and I had him out on the board getting tips so every year I've I've paid or went on a training course and that is a secret to things like your back. Your back doesn't get sore if it's only taking you, you know, 45 to 60 seconds to shear a sheep. Because yeah. you're moving around the sheep so fast, your back doesn't yeah. get sore. Your back gets sore if your technique's bad and the sheep's kicking out on you and you're spending ages bent over. You know, if you're straightening up every 60 seconds to get the next sheep, your, your back's fine. It, it never actually gets sore. It's just if your technique's bad, you get a really bad back. Um, okay. so that, that's okay. that's the top tip is is don't think you're a good like see until i always say see until if we use an irish reference um but you're, you're, in, you're in the republic yeah yeah i thought that you were just checking for upset something because <laughs> i could either go ivan scott or jack robinson but we'll go ivan scott like if unless you're beating ivan scott you need to go on a training course yeah you know, i'll accept see once you're beating ivan scott i'll accept you know enough you don't need a training course, <laughs> but but until that day happens, and I'm pretty sure nobody listened to this. Uh, um, well, very unlikely. Certainly, nobody in Ireland listened to this. Is going to be beating Ivan Scott. So get yourself yeah. a training course. Yeah, no, definitely that's good because you know I there wouldn't be many um, sheep shearing competitions say where I'm from down the south, but the one time I did see it now would have been at the ploughing, um, the national ploughing championships that we have. Obviously, yourself, you come over to it. Um, but just to see how fast they move, like I know I went to watch, um, you know, my friend, you know, from you, you, well, he's YouTube now, a unit, uh, yes. Carol. So watching how fast they're able to do it and just constantly moving, like it's it's high intensity. These competitions, do you, do you enjoy the competitions? Uh, I love for it. 
love the buzz. Yeah. Um, it's it's difficult now because I've uh, I'm moved up now into the grades, like so I'm up against guys like Ivan Scott. So uh, you know, I'm that's they're way above my level. You know, I'm I'm very rare. Am I ever going to see a final? It would need to be a you know a smaller competition. So getting that same buzz of the twenty sheet final, like they had at the plow in there, it, it, it's more difficult now, but. It's just such an adrenaline rush, but up there in front yeah. of the crowd, up against these top shearers, going to it. It's so macho that you can smell the testosterone. <laughs> like, you know, that is what I love about it. It's just like, it's, I always say like farming's a really hard business. You know, it's a hard job mentally and physically, but like sheep shearing is the absolute peak of that. You know, there, there yeah. is no, nobody, there's nobody going about in farming that thinks they work harder than a sheep shearer. So, yeah. like, to be up there and amongst those guys, it really, it feels good. Brilliant, yeah. And, like, even there, I was, you know, I was scrolling through your um, social media there the other day, and Lizzie, she, she's well able to get involved as well, isn't she? Yeah, so uh, my partner, Lizzie, she, we met at a speed cheer, and oh. she, she was a, yeah, I know, true love story. And she, <laughs> love it first year. Love it first year. That's that's, that's good. Actually, funny. That's the second person that's done that to me. That's that's a good one. Love it first year. Um, she's actually sitting behind me here, being sick, uh, listening to all this talk. Uh, but no. So yeah, met her at a speech. She was actually a full time sheep shearer. So I've only ever been oh, wow. a, a a farmer shearer. You know, I, I do a bit in the summer. Never actually been full time. But Lizzie was yeah. f- full time for four or five years six or seven she says uh traveling from starting down in devon uh, up to to scotland then to norway then to new zealand australia back to norway um she did she did all those things and and yeah it's a great lifestyle if you're willing to work and you make a lot of money like she yeah. she, she made a lot of money yeah yeah I'm, I'm guessing this leads us on nicely now too i'm guessing things have slowed down slightly for her seeing as there is uh, number three on the way, so congratulations. Yes, yes, with a quickly growing family. She doesn't mess about with things, does it? <laughs> uh, she just gets on with it. But, uh, yeah, so it basically came about COVID. You know, it stopped Lizzie's travelling. She she was working away in New Zealand that first season. We were um, sort of seeing each other. And then she came back. We did a lambing. And then I think COVID must have hit about then or whatever happened. There wasn't an option to go away again. And it just sort of came about that, we're kind of settling down and yeah one thing led to another and, and now she she's you know full-time mum and full-time farmer here as well so yeah yeah, yeah. No, no better woman but I do enjoy watching yourselves and the two boys that you have so far um uh, tell me what it's like you know to have you know it's 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 obviously difficult trying to balance you know being a, in a family and farming but it's lovely to see that you're all so active together on the farm you know it, it's kind of you know for people who are looking forward to having kids you know um growing up on a farm you know tell us a little bit what your day-to-day with the gang is like yeah so i mean that was a big part of my wanting to leave the police before i had kids was because i wanted to, them to have the same kind of upbringing that i had on the farm where you come home from school and mum and dad are both there and you just yeah. go out the back door and dad's there doing something, you know, usually I get home, mum had the soup ready and, and some sandwiches and then I'm straight out the back door to see what my dad's up to. And it was a great life. Uh, and I wanted that very much for my kids. And I'm very fortunate, like Lizzie, uh, I mean, to the point of madness, Lizzie takes them to do everything. Like they, they come for every job. And, you know, it, the whole system only works because because of Lizzie, really. Because I'm, I've been away for... You could you could argue the guts are fifty days solid. I've been away scanning, and yeah, you know we we have over a thousand sheep at, to the top this year, plus you hogs and store lambs. There's the guts of seventeen hundred sheep running for most most of the winter, and and Lizzie's been running about with two kids, and and preg- <laughs> and you know she's six months pregnant. Yeah, virtually doing it all herself. So we we have weekend help comes in, but you know the rest of the week she's doing it all herself. It's uh. It, it only works because because Lizzie makes it work, uh, so we're very very fortunate that way. Yeah, no, that's good because it's she kind of gives um, 
I just love watching it there because, you know, sometimes you see that it's it's easier to kind of hand the kids off while you're doing these jobs because they're, they're easier to do and you don't want kids running around. But I see her there and there's kids on her back and kids running in front of the quad and you're driving away and there's no apps. It's, it's just lovely to see because it's, it's you don't really get that much um, people to, doing that kind of thing anymore, you know? Listen, uh, if, if it was up to me, I would give them to my mum to watch while I went and did the shoot work. <laughs> but, but Lizzie, like, <laughs> see if something could be made more difficult. Like, Lizzie will do it. Like, she she's sick in the head. I think that's what comes back from me. <laughs> no, I, like, I mean that. She has, a, like, she she has this, like, um, do you know who, like, David Goggins is? <laughs> no. no, he's, like, this extreme endurance. Like, he's got the world record for oh. pull you know, yeah. you know who's gonna lift yeah. the boat, who's gonna lift to carry the boats and all that guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you've seen yeah. one on all these memes and stuff. Well, Lizzie's like sick in the head like him. Like she wants it. The harder it is, the more she enjoys it. <laughs> like honestly, oh, I love it. she's she's. Your she's kids sick. are benefiting from it anyway. <laughs> they absolutely. have lovely memories. They are. They are absolutely. <laughs> I mean, she's so crazy. She even talked about homeschooling. Like, oh, so if, if that on top of it all. Yeah, if that doesn't sound like some form of self harm, I don't know what it does. Like that, she is <laughs> off her head, honestly. <laughs> just, oh, and if I if I if I question it, I get like shouted in something. Like, ah, yeah, yeah, great idea. <laughs> we'll see. Oh. Um. So then, I suppose, do you know? Um. Are you um? Do you own the farm? Are you renting? What sort of setup have you at home? Yeah. So that's part of the the tricky thing with the kids is that. We rent a farmhouse, but we don't have any of the land around about it. So we rent roughly, oh, you know, the crazy thing is, I couldn't even tell you, but yeah. somewhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred acres uh, rented all seasonal lets or winter grazing, and it's all over Ayrshire. You know, from one point to the other would be like an hour and a half. We're kind of yeah, middle, yeah. so the worst case is forty-five minutes. But if you went from one point to the other, you'd be at least an hour and a half to 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 get there. Like it's fairly stretched out. Um, yeah but i know for farmers here it's it's tough it's tough to get land at the moment like did you have any issues um trying to get that land to rent see trying to get a start it is so difficult like yeah, yeah. oh i've tried for ages and it was just a, a a pure bit of luck got me a start and you know from then it's it's amazing once the ball starts rolling and you get a bit of momentum it I'm not saying it's easier to pick up land, but certainly people know that Lizzie and I are hungry to get on and yeah. we're, we're, we're keen for opportunities. And the big thing is we look after places. You yeah. know, a lot of my ground I get is from people that I've had, I've rented ground out for, for boys with cattle and they don't take the cattle off until November and it's poached to hell and they're like, I'm not having cattle again. I want sheep. I thought it might suit you. And I think, yep, yeah, that's great. I, we'll take it and you know I'll virtually take within reason if it's a reasonable size and, and not too far I'll, I'll take anything and then make it worry about how I pay for it later yeah you know, yeah, you know I, I, I just take, take the opportunity when it's there and, and worry about it later when did you actually go out farming on your own how old were you so uh, 25 it basically all came about my dad died so my dad died very suddenly okay. at 25 it was like uh, he got cancer and he got two months notice and then he was dead Okay. And wow. uh, it was definitely a bit of a sort of, like it was it was a grief thing at the time because yeah. I was very like the old I'm very like the old fashioned your dad's your hero you know yeah like so I was a kid yeah. brought up in the farm my dad was my hero everything he said was gospel uh, all I like even though I was at that point twenty five year old I was a man ish uh, yeah a, an older boy. I still like days off and weekends off, lambing type, you know, I was there working on the farm, helping him with yeah. whatever he was doing because I just love working with sheep. I love the, mm -hmm. I love working with my dad and working with sheep. And uh, as, you know, it dawned on me that obviously struggling to go over the issue of him dying, I then thought, oh, I'm never going to work, I'm not saying I'm never going to work with sheep again, but I won't get to work with sheep again. Then I thought, oh, my mum had quite a, a half acre of a garden. I thought I could, as part of the tied house that came with the job he had as a shepherd, I thought, I wonder if I could put four, she you know, four sheep in there and lamb them for a wee hobby. Bought those four yeah. sheep, then I get the chance of an eight-acre bit of ground. So I bought another twenty blackies or something for that, and then I get the chance of a fifty-acre and so on and so forth. Yeah. And it just, it just went from, from, as a way of dealing with the grief, to yeah. ch changing the path of my whole life. So. Yeah. 
pushed, so, pushed I mean, you on as well. Absolutely, and I, I've, I'm not saying I wouldn't have ended up going down the same route, but you know, if my dad hadn't died, I probably mm-hmm. been quite content just working away as I was. But yeah. it's, it's sort of forced my hand, and it's, it's it's good as well in a way that because I've made so many mistakes because all of a sudden you don't have that person, and, and I think I say to folk as well is that there's so many things when I first started doing the sheep in the sheep game, I didn't know why we did them. I just know that we did yeah. them. And, yeah. and there's still loads of farmers are the same. Like, uh, they don't know why they do things. They've just always done it. So I was mm-hmm. like that. Like, oh, we just always do, you know, I don't know why we do this. My dad just said we do them now, so we do them now. I never actually asked him why. <laughs> it's just if he says that's what we do, that's what we do. And then all of a sudden when he's not there, you can't say, uh, why do we do that? You know, you're yeah. like, see, I started having to find things out for myself and like the big one that I push all the time and that is that like so many people worm their adult use, you know, worm their use. Mm-hmm. Like I've it was when I was starting to find out about all this, I asked a, a sort of mentor I had that kind of took over that, filled a big space in my life at the time and I says, when do you worm your use? He's like, don't worm my use. He says, what do you need to worm your use for? He says, oh, I just thought, everybody worm their use. It's like, no, no, you yeah. deal with the worms themselves. And part of me is like, ah, is that right? So then I speak to, yeah. t- I go speak into like uh, contacts I've got at Alanco. I say, is this right about worm? Oh, I don't need to, it's like, the only time you need to worm my you is if she's lean pre-lamming and she has a, a risk to the immune system. The rest mm-hmm. of the time, don't worm them. And see now, I've not wormed a you, even pre-lamming, I've not wormed a you now in oh, five years at least. And it's, it's kind of my big thing. I'm going to start a campaign about it because the amount of farmers that still just toss wormer down news because I've always done yeah. it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I talked about it on my own podcast recently and a farmer phoned me and told me about this because it's quite funny. He's, his wife said to him, do you want your use? And he goes, aye. And she says, why? He goes, I don't know. We've just always done it. <laughs> <laughs> and the next day he phoned his vet to ask him about it and the vet's like, no, you don't need to do it. And he's like, oh, mad. It's like, we'll just, he's yeah. like, he phoned yeah. me because it's funny because he was an example of what I was saying. He's like, we've just always warmed our yows because they thought, you know, you warm your yows. Um, so, yeah. And now he stopped warming his yows. So that was a good success. And that was my, <laughs> that's my little rant. I somehow managed to get into my wee rant about warming yows. I'm, I'm, I'm big on that because <laughs> uh, resistance is another big issue. And, and part of it comes yes. from, from underdosing yows and, and being silly with warmer. So, yeah, there we go. That's yeah, what I'm some, some farmers like, they don't really actually think about these things, especially I know the older older generation. I know from myself, you know, working with your father, you you, you just kind of tend to do what they say all the time, and you sometimes you don't question things. And then I I've realised, you know, I I went and I got to say the green cert is like the what young farmers get here. I went away and did that for two years, came back, and you know you start kind of mentioning these new things to your your parents, and it, it, like Dad was looking at me like I had ten heads, like what notions are you after getting now going off to college and coming back with these ideas, you know, and it's, it's very hard then for myself, for my brother to try and like change things, you know? Uh, so I, I don't know how we get around that one. <laughs> no, ab- absolutely. And like the, the, the best, I say best thing, the, the, if I, you know, the word we use is just one example of it. Um, uh, but like the people will hear me say that and will still worm the use. Yeah. Yeah. They'll, you know, they'll, they'll hear me say that. They could even talk to their vet, and the vet say, no, you don't need to do it, and they'll still do it because I've always done it. It gives the ewes a good clean-out before tupping. You know, they'll say yeah. things like that, but actually, if they do a worm count, the chances are there's absolutely no worms because the ewes are dealing with the worms. So yeah, I was going to say, do, is, do you do samples then, or, or do you just leave them? Oh, not, not anymore. Not for ewes, no, no. I mean, I've not been no. using ewes for five years, so if there's a problem... I would I would known about it, you know. It's yeah. I had a yeah. friend though that didn't believe me. This is another story, and this was before the podcast. And I was on at him because he would always jag them, and it was big okay. problem big problems now with like these um, uh, yeah things like Dectamax etc. Resistance. So when boys are getting issues with scab now, there's worries that the Dectamax won't work because people there's quite a lot of people routinely just Dectamax are using the back end pre tupping. Yeah, and, and they'll say that same sort of you know covering for scab and various other things as well yeah. Yeah, which I totally get behind but a lot of them it's for like oh, it, de- the draw Dectamax and dip because the Dectamax one it's easier and two um, it gives them a good clear out for the worms too but actually they, they don't need that clear out so I got this boy to do a dung sample and there was like no worms in them 
and now he's cut out that jag every year. So it's a big saving financially. Um, it is well, a big saving, and and you're you're yeah. reducing the chances of um worm resistance for anything that is in them, you know, and resistance to that for scab in the future. Of course, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. Maybe you could uh, but, but, but go like, on the road and travel around, uh, preaching your your. Well, that, that's <laughs> all. That, but this is all came about because my before I would have been like many others. My dad says we do it. We just do it. I don't need to. I don't need to think about why we do it. We just do. Yeah. And 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 he's he's my hero. Whatever he says is absolute gospel. I would never. Yeah. Like, I never quit. No, and my mm. dad said was right. But as far as I was concerned, so. But all of a sudden, when he wasn't there, and and yeah. I was making YouTube videos, and I have to explain why I'm doing things. There be times I'm like, I don't even know why I'm doing this. So yeah. then, I would, so then, as I said before, I would then ask, and then I'd realise, oh, I don't need to do that. And it's it's yeah. really it's been it's been if we take a positive from a negative, that's been the positive. Yeah. Yeah, and even like twenty five. You know, it, it's it sounds old, but twenty five is so young to be just kind of f forced into it, almost not forced, but you know what I mean, like tr pushed into it. You know, you you're you're trying to look look for others in for for guidance or helping you. Did you have good support when you were that age? Because it's it is a very young age to be yeah, forced into it. Yeah, it, it um yeah, I suppose it is. I suppose it is young. It uh, was yeah, it was a sore one. Like it, you know. I did take it very, very badly at the time. Absolutely, I did. I, I was fortunate that the my sort of mentor in terms of the shearing and and the boy that I did all my con, you know, that was the contractor I worked for. He definitely filled a little role in terms of I could phone him all the time about things and ask questions, and he was pretty knowledgeable and switched on. And I sort of lent on him a little bit for for advice on all things to do with grass. You know, how much rent should I be paying for grass? How many yes. sheep? How many sheep can I put on this bit? Um, you know, could I get a loan of a tarp? Could I get a loan of a stock trailer? Could I get a loan of a set of pens? All yeah. all these little things that just help to to get me going. Um, yeah, it was it was a major impact. I'm ve I'm always very positive, right enough. Even in those situations, you know, I I said to folk, and I actually said this at my um, no, I didn't say this at my dad's funeral, but I said it around about that time when I was trying to convince myself not to be wallowing in, in so much grief is that like I had 25 years of, yes. of of my dad a lot of folk don't even get that I know I know do, yeah do you yeah. know what I mean so like putting a positive spin on it you know I got till I was yeah. a full a full grown man you know mm -hmm. so I was very yeah. fortunate that way so um yeah there's a lot of people worse off than me that's for sure that's true that's true and then I suppose Young farmers like get getting into it, you know. Say uh, here in Ireland, if if they're doing, if they go straight in for their green cert, you know, so after school they could be coming out as fully qualified farmers. You know, when they're twenty, twenty one, others tend to go say for the degree, and they're in college for you know four or five years, depending. So they're about they're they're in their early twenties when they're you know coming out and trying to you know get home. You know, either you know reinvent their home farm and try and improve it would you have any advice for any young listeners you know that are starting off in their journey yeah I, I mean as far as I can see and you can tell me if I'm wrong here Ireland seems like a really pl hard place for young people to either get started in farming or even to come home <laughs> yeah, to the definitely. farms because the farms are so small a lot of the time like a you yeah. know, I, I know they're not all like that but it's hard for these smaller farms to carry to you know to full time worker, you know, workers, yeah, um, uh, and even harder again if the father's not that old and he's not ready to step back. Uh, so on that basis, uh, a couple of things. One, I know dairy's big, obviously, in report. Like go to New Zealand, like go and travel, go and see something mm -hmm. else, you know, because you you only get you only really get one chance into that life, and that's in that period where you're between eighteen and you know maybe twenty five. You don't have any kids. You don't have any ties. Go yeah. and travel as much as you can. The farm will always be yeah. there at home. You know, the, the farm will always be there. Go and make a ton of money. Have a ton of life experiences. And, you know, you might come out of college thinking you know things. But it's not until you actually go to these other places and see the other systems. And uh, I, I, I recently, actually, Tuesday, the 20, whatever it is, of February, I have a podcast come out with a guy called Brendan Muldowney. 
he'd actually be a good one for you to speak to as well for a podcast. He is a partner within a business called Farming Partners. And he is from, oh, he's from Kilkenny, but that, that could be wrong. But oh. he's from, he is from the south, uh, at a small dairy farm. He went to New Zealand, saw the way they did things with the grass-based system uh, and the sort of share farming idea they have. And he's now set up farming okay. partners in the southwest of Scotland. And they have 15 farms uh, making up nine different dairy businesses. And he has uh, Kiwis and Welsh uh, fellas. I'm sure he'd love to get some Irish uh, guys or girls on board where you get involved, you milk cows, you, you run this New Zealand style system, but as part of your wage packet and your bonus, you get equity in the herd. Uh, and you can start oh, wow. build, building up your own herd of cattle. So it's very much like New Zealand-based share system. So I'm, I'm quite happy to give them a shout-out because I think it's great for young people. It's uh, yeah. farming, farmingpartners.co.uk. Loads of opportunities if you want to work. You know, yeah. that New Zealand-style dairy team. farming, yeah, you're out in the in the rain, moving electric fences, girdling about. It's bloody hard work. Um, yeah. So, so that is that is one element, but uh, I yeah. don't think there's any fear anyway of Irish, uh, the Irish youth not travelling because, to be honest, majority of them are gone. Yeah, is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, majority are gone. Whether it's you know Australia, New Zealand, Dubai, America. My brother is on about leaving now. My youngest brother, mm-hmm. like he's only what is he, twenty two. You know they're young and there there is it's it's tough here in Ireland even like trying to start a farm as as a young farmer like even my own dad he's only he only turned sixty this year so he would be extremely young very fit man yeah. no intentions of slowing down anytime soon so it's yeah. difficult then for the next generation like to just give you an example myself and my brother like we both love the farming but we're both full time working. So yeah, Eamon, yeah. my brother, would work in, in Carberry Group, which is a big kind of cheese factory operation. Um, they'd be global, but he's there full time as well as the farming because Ireland tend to be, you have your big dairy farmers, you have the odd, you know, big sheep farmers, but in, in, in retrospect, they're, they're quite small farms and it's, it's tough to support, yeah, like you said, multiple people. So you've, you're finding a lot more people actually going to university and college now um to try and get even if they're getting a some sort of a degree to work in the ag sector as well as as farming at home um it's it's com- definitely becoming more common yeah and it does strike me as that anyone i speak to uh, in ireland i'd say i'd argue the north is pretty similar i think um but certainly certainly in the south where even rental prices of land just seems bloody insane um so yeah it's it's i can understand why they're all wanting to go away and do yeah do other things yeah uh, just to, just to kind of compare when we're on the whole comparison uh, speech, um, the attitudes of farming. How what's it like in Scotland at the moment? Because in Ireland, um, you know, we have, um, you know, say the IFA now are starting to kick up a few protests and things like that. I know I've seen them in other countries. What's the attitudes like at the moment up up in Scotland? I think of all the countries that I've, no, not, I don't know every country, but of all the countries I've seen talking about different issues they have, etc., I think Scottish, a Scottish farming probably has it the best of the lot uh, at the moment. At the moment, that is... And touch wood. <laughs> touch wood, exactly. But I think, from what I believe, part of that is because our government's been so slow in, in deciding what to do, so nothing's changed. Okay. The, the subsidy and everything's been kept, they haven't, and, and it's to their credit, though, because what our government are doing at the moment is they're consulting with farmers and farmers' unions as opposed to uh, places like Wales, where they're just okay. the government's just making the decision. They don't care what the farmer yeah. says. They've decided they're planting these trees. If you want your sub, you have to plant these trees. Uh, and, and absolutely, I'm behind the Welsh farmers protesting. I don't know all the rules and what's happening in, in Ireland, I must admit. Um, I know there's things to do with land quotas, depending on how many cows you want to milk and, and various things like that. But, yeah, Scotland, touch wood, subsidy hasn't changed yet. It is going to in the next couple of years. There's going to be some pain. Uh, uh, but I think almost globally, well, globally, countries like ours that are, are, are yeah. very conscious of the climate, all farmers are probably going to have to do their bit a little bit, um, and yeah. but it's 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 being realistic and not 
dent in food production too much because at the end of the day, it, it's all good and well saving the, the climate and improving the climate, but if people are starving, um, you know, it, what, what was the point? That's not good so either. They, they, no, so I, but yeah. yeah, Scottish farm is good. Just I mean, lamb prices, we I, I don't know what it is in euros, but we were three pounds, three pounds forty seven today for lambs. That's live okay. weight. So I mean, that's averaging. Yeah, averaging one hundred and fifty pounds a head. Averaging, that's 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 yeah, well. that's <laughs> incredible. Honestly, I don't know what I lost for words there. It's the lamb just now. It's it's just incredible. Beef's pretty solid as well, but lamb milk steady nuts scotland's in a good place just now and i hope our government see the ben see what's happening in other countries yeah. and, and and keeps keeps us on a steady path to producing food making money for the economy and you know money given to farmers it, it never goes in an offshore account do, mm-hmm. do you know what i mean I like, every penny yeah. every single penny gets spent back into the local community whether it's employment whether it's you know a uh, building a new shed or or, or just repairs on equipment and yeah. it, it all goes back into the economy that's the thing i think there's a, a bit of a false narrative there i don't know in, in ireland anyways i don't know about scotland about farmers you know that were very well off rich people you getting money for free uh you know what's what's your thoughts on that I, I think, and I, and I joke about it a bit sometimes, I think, <laughs> generally speaking, if I'm perfectly honest, but generally speaking, farmers are rich. Like, they are rich, because I've seen what poor is, and, and yeah. farmers aren't, you know, and I would define rich, I'll take myself as an, ex- as an example, I would say I, I'm rich. Now, the only actual assets I have are, and I don't mind talking about my assets, I have £50,000 yeah. of, equi- of equity in a house in the town that's rented out, and I have uh, 1,400 sheep plus various parts, pieces of equipment. But I was working out the other day, there could be the guts of £300,000. There'll be about £300,000 there in, in assets that I could liquidate and have in cash. Now, at 33 years old, I could buy a £300,000 house mortgage-free. Yeah. That's rich. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm rich. Like, I don't care yeah. how you dress it up. That's rich. In today's yeah. world, that yeah. is rich. And yeah. things with farmers, particularly in Scotland, I don't know about. Most of them are are, are very are asset rich, but really cash poor. Mm-hmm. And and mm-hmm. the problem is sometimes see if you're in a, a farm that's been in the family for two or three generations, it doesn't matter what that farm's worth because selling it is never an option. So yeah. you're, so actually, that's all you're enough. left with is just somebody that's cash poor that is poor. Yeah, you know, it's, it, mm-hmm. they're, they're not poor. But in their head, they are, because they can't sell yeah. that farm. They, they they can't be the one to, to let it slip. And we do have a lot of that, you know, people really struggle, and that's where mental health becomes a factor. Because from the outside looking in, you think, oh, you just sell that farm, and then you've got a million pounds in the bank. Like, yeah. <laughs> like what, I, I, what I wouldn't give to be in your situation. But it's, it's, it's more than that, you know, when, you, when it's been in the family for, for over 100 years, the weight of that on someone when the farm maybe isn't paying because not not every farm is efficient and you know if maybe they it's there's not been enough progress made in the past 10 15 years you all of a sudden fall so far behind it's uneconomical to catch up you know there's we see so many yeah. dairies been the prime example if dairies aren't spending money like mad to keep up they fall so far behind that they just have to you just have to stop um mm-hmm. So it becomes this big weight on farmers, and that's where the mental health things are factor. So I, I I don't like the narrative of farmers being rich because it, I don't know. I'm jo- I, I joke that they are rich and I'm rich because, <laughs> but, but but by by people, I don't mind saying it because I know what I mean by it. You know, I yeah. I, I know that they're ass. But these people that are saying farmers are rich are are making it out like you know they're uh, they're uh, Conor McGregor. You know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> splashing it, you know, do you know what I mean? That when I, when I, when I, when I say that I'm rich, it, yeah, you know, I, I can explain it. And but the, the narrative they're trying to put out is that that we shouldn't be giving money to these people. Yeah. But actually, yeah. these cash tight businesses, if they don't get that support, it, it all crumbles and falls apart. And you have of another course. farm sold if, in the if it's in Scotland, it's getting sold quite more often than not for bloody planting trees. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know what I mean? And it's another business gone and it never comes yeah, back. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, the narrative, I don't mind me winding farmers up and having a bit of a laugh with them and saying, you know, <laughs> uh, you know you're, you're rich, but uh, yeah, when, yeah, they, yeah. when these people are saying it, they're saying it with venom and, and, they're, and yeah. they're, trying, they're trying to produce a false narrative of what, yeah, what, what, of being, what they mean by being rich. Do you yeah. know what I mean? They're thinking yeah. Lamborghi- Lamborghinis and, and, and mansions. <laughs> I as wish. Po- <laughs> I, exactly. As opposed to, um, you know, hard bloody work to make it all pay. Yeah. 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 And then just in terms of like false narratives, do you find the pressure of, you know, you've so many people watching you on a day to day business of spreading the right message you want to spread on social media? You know, do, do you have to think about sometimes what you're saying, how, you, how you're saying it? Because sometimes wording is, is everything when it comes to posting things online yeah absolutely i i'm a big believer in setting a good example i and a, and a, a big thing with the sheep game is a huge following with the kids um yeah it, it, and i really believe in setting a good example that there's no swearing in the sheep game you know mm-hmm. and don't be wrong I, I i worked in the police for 12 years i live in the west coast of scotland we swear like trippers like i think <laughs> I don't know if it's un- it's offensive to say you guys swear a lot as well, but like we swear a lot, we really do swear a lot. But I'm very conscious, you know, set a good example. We don't swear, we don't do too much cowboy stuff, and um, we yeah. try and set a good example all the time. I'm I'm very. This is where the police comes in. I, I know the things. I don't know the things because we all make mistakes, but. Mm-hmm. I know roughly how to say things without upsetting people. I don't get yeah. very controversial with the sheep game. Like, okay, I don't tackle a lot of issues head on with the sheep game. Apart from do- livestock worrying is a thing I do try and, and make a thing about. But I, social media, like it weighs me down. Like, see if I go on yeah. social media and everything's um, farmers protest, anti farming, mm. uh, farmers are ruining the planet. Uh, yeah fighting here and fighting there gaza and, and and all this stuff that's happening it weighs me down a bit so i try and keep the sheep game just having just banter yeah do you know what i mean yeah. i i am very yeah. i just want the sheep game to be a laugh yeah uh, i i i don't tackle many serious issues partly because i just feel like i'm not versed enough to yeah to have at it like I, i'm not and and also partly for my own mental health as i mm-hmm. don't like to focus on the negatives I like yeah. to just live in a wee fairy tale world where everything's great and just pretend it's not happening. Um, so yeah, there's, that's that's how I kind of treat the sheep game. Yeah, no, that's good. It's nice. It's nice to be um, the fairy tale for someone else. You know, when there's so much negativity on social media, like you said. Yeah, yeah. I I I want the sheep game to be folk want to see what 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 we're doing and up to because it's, it's a laugh and it's banter and yeah. I, I i always try hard to make a fool of myself like <laughs> um whether that's being shown the state of the pickup or like the lambing videos always go so well because i yeah. make a real point of showing all the bad stuff mm-hmm. because the amount of messages i get from people who have a really tough day in the lambing shed or yeah. out lambing and then they'll come in and stick my video because what happens at lambing time is you don't see other people and you just wallow in your own you think you're the only one having a bad time yeah so so they come in and they put my videos on they go it, it's that strange thing you feel better seeing someone else struggle yeah you know and it's not out of badness yeah, yeah you have something in common with someone yeah it's not out of badness yeah. it just makes you feel yeah. oh it's not just me you yeah. know it, yeah. it, so I, I that's the amount of message i get with people saying that they have real had a really hard day they come in watch my video and saw uh, last year for example was a spell of two days of shocking weather here and I had dead yeah. lambs everywhere and I was constantly carting sheep ewes and lambs back into the shed and they come on they said you know they'd had like 30 dead lambs in their morning rounds and they come in and watch my videos and they felt and they were really down and they watched and they felt better because they realized actually it's not just them you know we're all in it together yeah. and it actually helps yeah. me I was, I was talking to someone the other day about this although I don't have the videos to watch as such see having to talk through and explain what I'm doing yeah it, it help, it's like therapy for me because rather than just sitting on the bike and quietly going no dead lamb do this do that mm-hmm. I have to talk through why it's a dead lamb you know yeah. it's been shocking weather here tonight this is like yeah. these these things do happen and it's almost like I'm talking myself down telling from, yourself yeah 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 I'm almost like pep talking myself like Cammy, it's not it's not your fault it's the weather there's only so much you can do blah blah mm-hmm. blah 
uh, and that actually really helps me as well. Yeah. Weirdly, so like the wee GoPro becomes yeah. like my friend at Lambing Time. <laughs> it's so strange, <laughs> but it does. It's like it's like my therapist <laughs> at Lambing Time. You're your own therapist. At least exactly. you don't have to pay for that. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, there's some perks, some perks. No, sounds good. Um, tell me, have you any plans for this year? Any Anything you can share with us? Anything exciting? Any travelling? Will you be back for the ploughing again this year? <laughs> We're definitely be the ploughing again. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Love the Irish. Um, in terms of big, exciting things, we have... Uh, I suppose the only thing that's really in the calendar of a couple of trips away, I plan to go to Iceland to do the big hill gather there uh, the mountain gathers in Iceland I plan to go to, well I am going to America to a, a hill sheep show, oh, wow. so they have a North America hill sheep show um, in Michigan in September, I'm going to that as well but yeah, no, there's, there's nothing major planned, I mean for us the tricky thing for me for making good content is that I don't have a farm so yeah my content is now five years down, or four years down the line or five years down the line. It's it's still just sheep in a field, going to the top, having lambs. Like, mm-hmm. it's hard to make good content. I'm not saying it's hard to make good content, but I enjoy watching things where I see progress. I see yeah. a, a new shed being built, something new. Like, uh, Adrian at iFarm, We Farm is a good... Oh, Car- yeah, he's very good. Yeah. Carol at, Uni- at YouTube is in a similar position to myself, but... Adrian at like I farm we farm if we if we talk a, an Irish setup farmer Phil brilliant you know mm-hmm. like he's just taken on another hundred twenty acre farm he's, he's yeah. constantly improving things with the calves etc new feed bins you're seeing real progress Adrian's always tinkering at things and renovating uh-huh. cottages and doing up quad bikes that's that's the stuff I like to see is, yeah. is, is that kind of progress and then referring yeah. back to it and seeing how it works whereas yeah. I just can't do that just now because it's all rented ground, so... I know. Um, but the day will come. The day will come. It will. Be optimistic, like you always are. Always. <laughs> well, um, I think that has been a fantastic chat. I think we could be stay chatting for another half an hour if we had the time. Uh, definitely. But, uh, I feel, you never even asked me anything about Herdwatch. I feel like I should say... I uh, no, don't no, worry. This is a very a neutral conversation. I think everyone knows at this stage now you use Herdwatch. Yeah, and I, like like Lizzie now does most of the Herdwatch stuff for us because she's like loves it, lo- loves all the tweaking stuff and that. But yeah, I like I know you've not asked me to say anything about Herdwatch, but I, it is class. Like it really yeah. is really really good. And even just for like we're about to do our QMS thing, which is like farm assurance. Yeah, it's like it's like the medical records are like invincible because. Like, mm-hmm. they're, they're just so easy to bloody do like it's a two minute job yeah, like it's yeah. so good man so yeah, yeah. Uh, big fans yeah. well you'll, you'll need Lizzie will need all the help she can now you know, for the next few months so her watch might be her little saviour exactly. <laughs> doing all the rest of her she may, you may need to add a section for recording the kids and their treatments <laughs> we're getting that many of them <laughs> there's, a, there's something to that there's a, there's a good option for an April Fool's yeah. post actually for her watch feed that back to the team <laughs> <laughs> the toddler watch <laughs> yeah toddler watch there we go that'd be good <laughs> no that has been great it had actually it's been a great chat and like I said we could go on all night but yep. I want to move on to our this or that okay so I explained it to you briefly so I'll say two things and you literally have to say give me your answer straight away don't think about it it's going to be as, as fast as we can now there's only what is there one two there's only about five or six of them so, are you ready? Ready. <laughs> ready think, to go. I think. Terrified. <laughs> okay. Male or female collie? Female. Use or rams? Use. Lambing indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Scanning or shearing? Shearing. Tea or coffee? Is it, is it fancy coffee or is it a kettle? We decide. <laughs> Tea. Quad or gator? G- uh, gator. Uh, Italy or Scotland in the match coming up in the rugby? I don't know if you're watching rugby. Uh, w- easily Scotland. <laughs> Are you sure? Easily Scotland, yeah. Even even, let- even England managed to beat Ireland. Uh, sorry, even uh, England managed to beat Italy, not Ireland. Yeah, Italy. when he said Ireland, that, I was like, ah, oh, take that back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Uh, and what, what? Oh, you go. just one more to finish take your guess or your your uh, uh, boy or girl for baby number three what do you think uh, <laughs> I'm going to say uh, a girl 
Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Fingers crossed. Well, My balance the, has just run in the house. The scanning lady said it was a girl, so I hope she... <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a fairly safe guess. <laughs> Uh, well, you said yourself, scanners make mistakes. Absolutely, and you know it's always easier to to scan a boy because you can definitely see it's a boy. <laughs> but with a girl, with a girl, it could just be tucked away. So there you go. <laughs> you never know. You never know. know. You you never know. know. That's it. <laughs> well, I have to say this has been a great chat. Thanks so much, no, uh, Cammy, for coming on. We really, really do appreciate it. Any final words? No, just uh, good luck to Ireland in the rugby. I, I wish so bad that we'd got that try against France and we're having a, a St Paddy's weekend. Four wins out of four. Scotland v Ireland. What a match it would have been. But I, I still... I, do you know the sick bit in me, the Scottish bit in me, thinks that Scotland are the kind of team that would would go on and beat Ireland and still lose the Six Nations. To, you know, do, on, bon on points, like... Like, we're the kind of team that just because we almost beat France and almost did it, we'll now go and do something stupid like beat Ireland and then still not win the Six Nations. That's how. That's what it's like being a Scottish person. <laughs> that's wishful thinking, though, because you guys will probably hammer us. You're unbelievable now. Um, but, yeah, good luck, good luck to Ireland and the Six Nations. Uh, we're, we're, you can share in our celebrations when yeah, we win. <laughs> you're, you're always my number two team. So, yeah, as that's long as it's hear, one of us. Well, it has been an absolute pleasure. Thanks so much, Cami, a.k.a. The Sheep Game. Make sure you give him a follow if you're not following already. Uh, that's it, guys, for this episode of the AgriPod. It is literally coming up to the hour. It has been an absolute great episode. And make sure you tune in next time where we will have our third guest next month. So until then, guys, chat to you later. This podcast was brought to you by Herdwatch. Download the Herdwatch app today to eliminate farm paperwork and make better decisions with your farm in your hand. I hope you enjoyed this month's AgriPod by Herdwatch. Tune in next month where we will have another special guest in store. Bye. <coughs>